Devin Pike with the Dallas International Film Festival. It's opening night and the, the gala screening of Words and Pictures will open up the festival. And we're excited to have the film here. Amazing story, fantastic cast, and the director is kind enough to join us, not only for the gala, but also to talk about the film prior to the premiere. It's Fred Chapezi. Fred, thank you very much for coming out to Dallas, and thanks for coming to the festival. That's good, because it wouldn't be a film if it wasn't for all the investors who are all from this city. So. Talk a little uh, bit about that because Gary Cogill is a uh, he, he's a staple for, for the Dallas Arts for so many years and transitioned into film production over the last three or four years. For somebody who is very new in the production game, what was it like working with Gary and his team? Uh, well, it was pretty good. You know, um, the film was brought to me by Curtis Birch, you know, from Latitude Productions, and then. Uh, uh, Richard Toussaint, I think, uh, combined forces with them in, um, you know, financing the film, and then uh, Gary came along as a kind of uh, Richard's rep on the set uh, to make sure we were doing the right thing. Um, but he was great because he was in extremely encouraging, and uh, and uh, we we had a little sort of video village off to the side of each set because investors were coming along and watching what was going on uh, in Vancouver, believe it or not. Uh, and that was kind of fun, you know, it can be a little disconcerting thinking all these people are sitting there watching <laughs> what you're doing, but, uh, but uh, and Gary wrangled that a lot, as did Curtis, but uh, Curtis, of course, was the main um, uh, creative producer on the, on the project, and he was the reason I was doing it. And, uh, but we're very grateful to Dallas. Talk a little bit about the film because it seems like the great bar argument for academics where what is going to be um, more prominent in someone's upbringing, in, in, in this case in a prep school where you have an English teacher and an art teacher uh, beginning to spar over the curriculum and um, almost a, um, a war of attrition between the two different camps. What attracted you to the project? Was it was it the nature of the, the interplay between Clybona and J Julia Benichet's characters, or was it the the debate between what is more stimulating for the mind? Is it the word or is it the visual? Look, the surface of it is there's two people um, struggling to find a way through life when one hasn't lived up to his expectations and the other uh, can't live up to her expectations because of a physical infirmity uh, and they've got to find a new path through life and they meet one another at that crucial point. Uh, they're obviously attracted but they don't want necessarily have to deal, deal with someone else. Um, but you know the attraction gets bigger and, and it's an adult romance where there are real situations, and real problems, uh, normal life but it goes to wonderful places, uh, as opposed to phony, structured uh, setups, you know, for either comedy or romance or cuteness or something like that. This is a, a real adult romance. I haven't seen that uh, in a long time, and I wanted to do one of those. Uh, then you have the benefit of what you're talking about. Uh, you know, words, pictures. What what is art? What is what expresses? something best, uh, how do people relate to it, how do they understand it, music, you know, as well, you know, and uh, just exploring that, but underneath all of that is what's happened in education, how are kids so distracted by so many things today and so disinterested in what's in class, should they be using encyclopedias or iPads, you know, the, that whole argument, you know, it, that's sort of propping up the whole film as well. So there's a lot of things to explore and have fun with, you know. You only have two hours to work with. You, 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 <laughs> well, you, you, you tuck <laughs> it in underneath. That's what I call it. You thicken up the scenes and the situations so that you're not just looking at a silly little love story. You're looking at something with substance. You don't always have to pick up on everything underneath, but you can kind of feel the, the support underneath a, a real you know, situation. A valid subtext as opposed to just paper-thin characterizations and cardboard cutouts yeah. of supporting characters. Yeah. 
but not getting in the way of the front story either, you know, because that would be commercial disaster. Talk a little bit about Clive Owen, because we've seen Clive as uh, a, a gruff, not necessarily all action, because he's, he's done dramatic roles in various venues, but I was hard-pressed to find where he had any kind of a, a role that allowed him to breathe as more of um, not necessarily a romantic actor, but somebody who has a genuine relationship with an on-screen character. Talk a bit about working with Clive and how you were able to um, get that out of him. Fortunately, I knew quite a bit about Clive's career right from the very first film he did, which he did for the Canadian director. Ooh, I'm going to forget his name, damn. Um, you know, where he was a bit of a lost soul uh, something to do. I think he lost his daughter and so he was always going to strip clubs but not for the reasons you would think, you know. Uh, very, very, Adam O'Goyan is the director's mm. name. Really uh, gutsy, dark movie. I've also seen Clive in uh, The Boys Are Back um, um, which was uh, where he lost his wife and was, you know, having to look after his kid and all that stuff. So. Uh, I've seen him play the roles other than the action heroes and things and know that he's got a great depth and he's, you know, classically trained, uh, you know, in uh, RADA in England and, uh, uh, you know, done quite a bit of stage stuff as well. So he's got a very solid foundation as an actor and uh, obviously is always looking to do something like this uh, where he can stretch. Was there... Immediate chemistry between... Oh, was there ever? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't take that there. <laughs> I could get him. Uh, you could see it, though. They both wanted to work together. I think they'd tried once before and it didn't pan out for economic reasons or something. Uh, but the minute they got together, they were just delighted in one another. They seemed to... They came at things quite differently and yet somehow the same things amused them. Uh, and they, you know, there was a kind of cheeky, crackling electricity going between them, and uh, I thought, well, we can take advantage of this, you know. The one thing that I've enjoyed with your movies, um, going all the way back to uh, Roxanne, IQ, is that the, the characterizations just seem to be more genuine. It, and it's not all script, it can't be, because you've got to be able to have that kind of actor who can pull off the sure. just the, the the depth and the story of it but that's something that, is that something you seek out when you're looking for your next project is something that you can actually get a great group of actors and craftsmen in to work on absolutely absolutely and it's something i work on when i get the project to to make sure all of that is there uh you know even in something like roxanne um you know, there's a lot of comedy, comedy in Roxanne, but you've got to give it a really good, solid base, a really natural place that it comes from. So when you do go into the exaggerated stuff, you've got to know just how far to notch it up so that you don't just turn it into silly. It, it could still be connected to the natural way of behavior. Um, I enjoy finding those levels and I enjoy um, having you feeling very sad about something or getting caught or upset by something and then switching on the humour, making you laugh and making you a little bit embarrassed that you're laughing at something like that, which is what life, which, what life does to break uh, grief and things and pain. Uh, and similarly, I get you laughing and then I like to go, you know, suddenly the sad aspect of that becomes very clear and you kind of go, oh, God. Right? And that way your emotions are kind of heightened and tossed around a bit and so you're, you're emotionally paying attention a lot more but getting a deeper uh, relationship with the story. Opening night gala hit the Dallas International Film Festival. There's a lot going on in town. You can't, you can't do that unless you have a good basis as a script, too, by the way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you've got to have the right cast to be able to pull all that off, too. I mean, yeah, the casting absolutely. process for Words and Pictures, 
other than knowing that you wanted to go with them. Was Clive your first choice? Yeah. All right. Um, how long did it take you to actually fill all those roles? Because you've got a lot of great supporting characters all the way for the faculty and the kids as well. Yeah, yeah. Kids are all great. Kids are all Canadian, actually, surprisingly. Uh, to have, uh, say, Naveed Negaban as, um, as um, the headmaster. Now, who would cast the real villain out of Homeland uh, as a headmaster of a school, you know, it's it's well, unexpected. I'm sure the kids would think of that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's <laughs> but it's that, you know, actors have great talents that are often not picked up on. You know, they they get typecast, and that's all they're ever going to get. And I just think that's nonsense. If they're good actors, it's great to give them a chance to explore different things, and uh, you know, and surprise you, you know, uh, and they bring. To small parts, they bring greater depth. When, when, when you look at a festival like this that's going on for 11 days, and to have words and pictures be the anchor and the, the gala, how does that make you feel as a director, just to have that um, be the focal point of the festival where everything else branches out? Great. Yeah. yeah that's great. It's a nice compliment. But it's great to hear for me because, you know, as I say, picture wouldn't exist unless everybody here had given us money. Uh, and also, the first American film I made was in Texas uh, called Barbarossa with Willie Nelson and Gary Busey. I thought so. that was your, was it, was it released after another film you had done? Because I didn't realize it I was know, first. it wasn't my first, it was just my first American ah. film, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So, uh, it all mixes together, you know. Barbarossa was a film that I watched with my dad at least once a year for many, many years. And okay. and there, there's so many films you've done over the years. Thank you for doing that. An amazing body of work. And thank you for bringing words and pictures to Dallas. We really do appreciate it. Great. The movie comes out nationally on Memorial Day weekend. Otherwise, you can see it right here at the Dallas International Film Festival. For more information, visit DallasFilm.org. Brett, it's a gas to have you here. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks, man.